It's okay, I literally am about to start, so that's fine. Uh, my talk today is on uh, Teacher Tap. Teacher Tap is an app that you put on your phone, and um, it's designed to do a longitudinal survey of teachers. Uh, we have been running for a year, almost two, one academic year, a year and a half with our, with our trial, and uh, we, we've been surveying teachers in England and in the UK for uh, that time, and we're now at the stage where our survey sample size is, is uh, large enough that we've been able to do, take some findings uh, out of it. So, uh, just very quickly who we are. Uh, there's myself, who's the tech guy. I'm the person who uh, sits beavering away at the computer, um, looking, working on the app and uh, on the data. And we have uh, two, we're all former teachers, uh, Laura McInerney, who's uh, an editor of, or was an editor of an education newspaper um, in the UK, and Becky Allen, who was an academic, or is an academic um, in at university, she's just actually stopped and left to, to do teacher tap full time. Uh, so she's been uh, an academic with the um, Institute of Education and hi, hi Sarah, uh, in Institute of Education and with um, the FFT uh, running an education uh, data uh, house where they've been looking at at uh, education data in detail. So, I'll basically show you the app first and then we can talk about what we do with it. So, we work with teachers, we work with uh, clients as well to, and, and with ourselves to craft three multiple choice questions uh, for the panel and we load them onto our system. So we've got thousands of questions that we're, we're asking teachers and people want to ask questions through our app as well. Um, we, ask, we can ask questions to different teachers, depending on the type of teacher they are, whether or not they're senior leaders, whether they're um, early, early years teachers, <coughs> primary, the subject that they teach. And basically, at 3.30 every day, the phone buzzes, and they click on it, and they load the app, and this is what happens. They get asked three questions. And the questions might be all related to each other, or they might be part of the theme that we're running through the week. Uh, in this case, this is a question about um, moving jobs. So it might be a question where we want to do a an uh, either or choice in this situation, just to try and separate our panel um, to, to see if we can um, instruct our, our findings. And it might be a demographic question like this, what sort of school did you go to? And once that happens, uh, we show them results from yesterday. So they see what everybody else uh, put into the system across the UK. Um, and they can see the results, they see what they, they chose, uh, and the three, set, three sets of results are then shown. They are then able to look through them, and if they wish to, they can, they can share them. This is an example of a question which is very specific to the UK. So uh, we have chief executives of groups of schools, and um, we're basically asking them, do we think, what, what, uh, amount of money do we think they should be paid? So it's about thinking about how much, how much money, um, or, or thinking about uh, salaries and so on. Uh, and here's a question about holidays. Are you happy with the current situation with the holidays? Um, if they're interested in the, in the result and they want to share it, they can actually share it to social media uh, or to email so they can then start a conversation with that if they wish to. And that, so effectively those results are public domain and, and we, we want them to share, share those results. And it starts quite often a long conversation 
on Twitter <laughs> about, about those results. There's one going on about this particular one actually at the moment on Twitter as we speak. Step four, once they've done that, we want to give something back. Uh, step four is that we give them uh, tips. We give them blog posts, curated tips that either have been suggested to us or we have chosen. Um, that either they might go with the questions that have been asked or they might be just an ongoing set of uh, blog posts that we think are interesting. And uh, you can click on that and that was my browsing history, there we go. So this is the tip that's actually up today for, for people to read. It's a long read uh, looking at uh, neuroscience, looking at um, uh, the science of teaching and learning to read as it says there. Um, we, we are then also given badges and so on so that they are able to uh, see how they're doing in the app and that, that's the increased engagement quite a lot with our teachers. And then the, the other thing we do behind the scenes is we bring all that together and publish a daily, uh, sorry, a weekly uh, blog looking at the data and cross-referencing it so that we know that primary teachers are thinking this, secondary teachers are thinking this, new teachers are, um, have certain opinions, whereas teachers who've been teaching for a long time have diff different opinions. And it may be that uh, teachers at different levels within the school think different things. So we, we publish that and uh, that goes out on a weekly basis to the app as well. And this is the age-old question, why? So, we're doing this for a variety of reasons. Um, I'm going to show you Becky's words first, whose idea it was. So Becky Allen there is, she's been a researcher for a number of years now, and she wasn't getting good response rates for surveys. She was getting 10%. Um, to teach the surveys, and because the surveys are designed for people who are sat at their computer or sat on a, on, uh, with a piece of paper to tick and so on, and teachers' lives just don't work like that. They, they're busy, they've got a class to go to, they don't want to spend a lot of time filling out a survey. So every single time she was trying to do research, um, it was hampered by, as it says here, the ability, inability to check the different schools um, quickly and get enough of a sample size for her to be able to um, use that research going forward. So she also didn't want to waste people's time. So she decided that the best way to do this would have something quick on your phone and to do it in a longitudinal manner rather than a long survey to fill in. And to build up a habitual nature to it so it didn't feel like it was onerous, it didn't feel like it was wasting your time and you were getting something back for it. Um, I joined uh, the, the team pretty early on into their development around um, September last 2017 uh, and the reason I was so interested in it was I was frustrated as a teacher about the status quo, about the fact that I'd been teaching in different schools Everything was different. Nobody seemed to know what people thought in, in other schools. They, they, they were all their, their little silos. And you kind of needed to start again if you're in a new school. You start, you, you, or you, you've got a load of information from your previous school, or you've been to a research ed. I've been involved in research ed for the last uh, five, five years now. Um, and I was going to another school and nobody knew about it and so on. So it's this idea that our, our schools of these little silos was very frustrating to me. And so I wanted to um, give teachers a way of comparing, you know, seeing what other people around the country or even around the world thought about education and thought things that researchers know about. They find out about through uh, things like PETA and so on, but teachers tend not to be as interested in. So in this <coughs> case, they do seem to be interested in looking at the questions that other people have answered and uh, comparing what they think to, to other people. So it's much more immediate, and I like the idea of that. 
And I also liked a good technological <laughs> challenge because uh, it has proved to be. Um, this is where we're at. So June 2017 was when the idea was born. Uh, born and you'll notice it says there was a company formed uh, for the very simple reason that we needed to get funding in order to do this and we wanted to build it quickly. Uh, we were granted money from uh, two organisations in the UK, uh, Nesta and Gatsby, and they were happy to do this but we needed to have a structure in it, it couldn't just be an individual uh, basis. So we needed to have some a structure for it. Uh, we launched the experiment, as it was then, at Research Ed in September 2017 and got 400 people, captive audience, onto the platform straight away. So that was important because we needed to have a large enough sample to get people interested in using it. That then continued and our sample size grew. We got to about 1,500 people. Uh, March 2018, changing everything, we needed to change the, uh, the data structure. Um, and then over the summer, we were really worried that teachers would, they weren't going to bother using it. They did carry on using it. We gave them a little bit of encouragement as well, and we held a competition where we would give them a library of books um, for their school, not for the teachers, but for their school, and uh, in, re in return for re keeping going with answering the questions. And the person, we ran a, a, a essentially a lottery at the end of the people who had answered the questions, and someone won. The delightful story about this is the person who won the books was somebody who was a teacher who didn't like using social media. She lived in the north of England, far away from anywhere. It took Laura. Um, six hours on a train to get there with all those, all these books, and she said that Teacher Tap was like her lifeline to other schools. She was in a rural school. She didn't really um, have much interaction with any other teachers outside her school, so she found it really, really useful as an app. Um, I'll fast forward here, new version, and um, we. Just last week, um, grew past 3,000 teachers, which kind of unofficially makes us the largest regu regular education survey in the UK. So we've kind of grown this and we're really pleased with where it's at. So that's kind of what it is. And what's in it for teachers? Why would they use it? Well, I've explained, I think, that they, they like finding out what's going on. Uh, they also like the tips that we give them. We get a lot of feedback and they're very desperate to find, if they've, if they've not seen it, they want to see the blog posts that we've, we've uh, posted over the course of the last week. So we make sure that we put that into our weekly blog. Um, they enjoy just um, five minutes at the end of the day of just kind of, right, what's on teacher tap? And, and just answer the question. There's something that just kind of, punctuates their day. They don't all answer it at 3.30, you have 24 hours to do it, but that we, we see lots of people answering at the, at the end of the school day. And it's shareable. And with our latest app, app, app update, we've also added badges. So this idea that you're using the app, well done, thank you for using the app, and uh, the idea that you've used it 10 days in a row and so on. And it's quite funny that even grown adults actually do get quite a kick out of uh, winning one of those and they get quite upset if they've missed it. So that's where we're at. Uh, one thing that we have done and introduced this, this term is an education publisher, uh, book publisher, John Catt in, in the UK. They've offered some uh, money off vouchers for regular users as well. So we've been able to get teachers involved from that perspective. So, I'm just going to go through some of the uh, sorts of questions we ask and, and some results that we've seen. So, one of the reasons we do this app is in the UK we have a teacher retention and recruitment problem. And we do have um, the situation where we're not getting enough teachers in for our growing number of pupils 
And so we do ask quite a few questions to do with job satisfaction. I'm not going to go through them all, but here's a very basic uh, kind of example of if you could go back in time, would you tr choose to train? Would you, have, do you regret your decision to be a teacher? Um, gra gratifyingly, 40% of our panellists say yes, definitely, they love it. Probably, um, but the very fact that we've got maybe a fifth of the, our respondents saying mm, maybe not is a, it's a signal of what the problem is in the UK, certainly. And do you expect to be a teacher until you retire? Is this a job that you want to do for the rest of your working life? Um, again, half the teachers are, yeah, they want to do it. Uh, others, as you can see here, uh, maybe. They're not so sure. So this kind of bookends, if you like, our recruitment retention problem that we have. Um, in the, in the uh, UK, our exams are called GCSEs, our um, end of the equivalent of the gymnasium exams would be our GCSEs. And um, we, we're interested in the data and how that's used within the school. So teachers are quite often uh, expected to use uh, de the data and set targets for their students of what grade are you going to get and so on. So there's a, here's a couple of questions here that we've asked recently on our, our data and our targets setting culture that we have in school. Okay, um, We actually have pre predictions in quite a few schools and you can see here that this is actually sent just to the secondary teachers which is why it's only one and a half thousand. Um, you can see that half of half the schools are being set uh, certain data by by the SLT, their senior leadership team, and they're set using uh, different types of information. Um, and only ten percent or so, but maybe five percent, aren't actually using this, these target these target grades. And when do the kids find out what their target is, thinking that that's when they are going to be sitting the exams? 33% are told the exams that we were, with the grades we are expecting you to get here in, in schools. And again, this is quite interesting just to see how many schools, or roughly how many schools are, are doing it, and, and explain to the kids what targets they're going to get and when. Um, it's quite instructive, I think, just to see the different types of schools. We can then split that off and look at where this is happening and so on. Another thing we've been looking at recently is costs, because of course that affects uh, recruitment and retention as well. Uh, you know, are you satisfied with how you're paid? And our teacher tap panelists are very <coughs> honest. They, we, we've asked them a lot of questions that they seem very happy to answer. Uh, we don't store their answers against the person that's answering. We store demographic data against them and we store it against a, um, a, ra a randomised key that is linked to that person but not directly, so it's split off. So what if you, if you uh, want to imagine it's like basically an, an anonymised version of yourself is answering the questions, but they're not linked back to you, uh, your actual personal data. Although this is personal data, isn't it? Which is why we we, uh, we explain about GDPR, and we're, we're explaining that these how these questions are being used when you start to use the app. Um, how many teachers are spending their own money on school items, for example? And as a household, do you earn enough money to live on? So yes, comfortably, holiday, off we go on holiday. Reasonably comfortably, maybe not a holiday every year. And 14% of our teachers are in households that are scraping by. So, no sum, so I'm not talking about all teachers in the UK, this is a sample, but it's a large enough sample and relatively well weighted that we think it's pretty representative of the uh, the English uh, education system. 
Other things we ask are things like this. If you were in charge, what would you like to do? Um, and again, this is a very recent question at the start of the year. 2019, New Year, Education Secretary, what do we need? And quite clearly, from the choices we've given, uh, school funding is top, and teacher recruitment. Um, last week, the Education Secretary announced that this was his uh, big thing that he wants to worry about, which is character education. So making sure that our kids are going to become well-rounded individuals. Very important, but it's not necessarily reflective, and I am being slightly um, uh, specific with the choice that I've done. I'd like the juxtaposition here. The, um, this is what teachers want them to think about, and this is what they're wanting to introduce. And the, these, these um, policies are actually... Um, we, we like to be able to ask questions that are related to policies that are coming out at the time, just to, to see what uh, people ask. Um, the Education Secretary did actually use teacher tap data in his recent speech about workload. So uh, we are actually starting to have some impact on policy as well, which is really, really gratifying to us. Speaking about our sample a little bit more, um, Becky wrote a blog post about this, which I've just pulled here so you can have a quick look through. Um, our sample isn't perfect. It's not uh, because people are self-selecting to use the app. However, we do check it against population data and census data of our teaching workforce to see. Uh, we know that we've got more secondary school teachers than we should have to uh, compare to the population. Um, we know that we have a few more middle-aged male, male, middle male teachers, and we're slightly top-heavy if we think about it from... The, the, there's more lead, uh, school leaders using the app than classroom teachers. As in, there aren't more of them, but they skew the sample slightly towards, towards that, that uh, side. So that what people are seeing in the app is unweighted results, so they're just seeing the raw results. But when we do analysis of it, we, we compare it to the school census data, the workforce data. So for us, we, we say that some of you are worth more than others. Um, we re-weight weight by these following categories, so uh, gender, age, your, your um, status within the school, whereabouts you are in the, in the, uh, geographically in the UK, uh, primary or secondary, and whether or not you're privately funded school or state funded school. So we look, we look at that to try and re-weight the results when we, do, when we do analysis. Speaking of analysis, uh, just going back to that cost, uh, the, the costs questions that we've asked recently. Previously we've looked at this and um, we've asked how satisfied you are and we can start to do some kind of basic cross-referencing. If you are a, a new teacher, um, so less than one to two years, you're not very satisfied with your pay. And in England, uh, new teachers' pay is, is very low. And um, obviously, as we, we go, go on through the career, um, your satisfaction levels, I'm reading this the wrong way around, aren't I? Our satisfaction levels as we get to the middle of our career are dropping, um, so, and then rising again once we're uh, getting over 20 years. My apologies for that. Um, comparing it to other graduates, uh, this is a question we asked. If you were the education secretary and facing one of the increased options, which one would you choose? 5% uh, increase for career teachers, 1% for later career teachers. So, what we're, what we're saying here is, how would you award your pay increase to, uh, across your school, uh, across your school workforce? Um, and would you give a, if you were Education Secretary, would you try and redress the balance? Um, and this was the results. Not very many people agreed with giving the most to the early career teachers, and uh, most agreed with giving a 3% rise to everybody. So they, 
teachers seem to want kind of equality, but not necessarily equity. Um, physics teachers, we have very few physics teachers in England, and so is it worth paying them more? Not many people uh, want to really give teachers very much extra money. Half say no, not a penny, thank you very much. Um, and uh, we, we, we did kind of go really high to see whether or not anyone thought. I suspect that's a physics teacher who's, or a few physics teachers there who've, who've said that. Um, as you can see here, the idea of giving some teachers more money if they're, if they're um, in shortage supply is not very well supported by the majority of teachers. Um, interestingly, it depends on how you feel about your own pay. So if you're dissatisfied with pay, then you don't want to give teacher, other teachers uh, any extra. If you're very satisfied with pay, then you're more likely to think, no, no, that's okay, we can, we can cope with this. So the idea that we can cross-reference these and find out a little bit more about why people think this is uh, interesting. Uh, and which subject, who agrees with paying them nothing more. So the, the uh, science teachers are surprisingly, um, that they, don't, they, don't want, they don't want physics teachers to get um, any more, but that's because there are biology and chemistry teachers all working in the same department, and they don't, they don't necessarily agree with some, some of their colleagues getting an extra pay rise just because they teach physics. Um, so this is the sort of thing we can, we can do. We can uh, cross-reference our results and so on. Um, I'm just going to move on just a little bit because I want to just... Move on to... I'm just conscious of time. Uh, our most popular tips. So these are our blog posts that we... We, uh, we give out, we curate them, we don't write them all, we write some of, some of our own and we find ones that we're, uh, we, we really enjoyed reading and think uh, the, the teaching palette, panel would be interested in as well. Um, getting rid of starters, that's the first 10 minutes of the lesson that uh, teachers used to be told, do a three part lesson, your starter, your main teaching and then your plenary. Um, how to set cover. This was a very popular tweet, a uh, very popular um, blo mini blog post. Modeling behavior. So you can see there's a wide variety of, um, this is a 40 minute read, maybe two to three hour read, depending on how, well, how much you want to kind of take take it on, but um, there's a big variety of um, tips that we, we uh, give to our panelists. Is the teacher tap coming through? Excellent. Is it 3.30? It's 3.30. We have a teacher <laughs> tap user in the room, which leads me on to... I'll answer now if you don't mind. You carry on answering. <laughs> uh, excuse the lowercase teacher there, that was my font uh, choice. Um, which leads me on to teacher tap panels. So we currently have... Uh, a 3,000 plus panel going in the UK, in England mainly, a few in Scotland and Wales, but it's mainly the English education system we've been looking at. Um, and it's already at 3,000 plus members. And we're already trialling a, a teacher training panel, so a panel of teachers who are still, they're not uh, qualified yet. Um, a very small panel at the moment, it's coming and going, but we're, we're, we're trying with that. And we would like to trial uh, an international panel, and we'd like to start it here with four people. <laughs> four people here in Hanning. Hanning, Hanning. I'd, uh, I'd love there to be more, but actually, this is literally going live today, an international panel, so the very fact that we haven't got lots is okay. Uh, it would be it would be nice if there were more, but basically, um, it w we would love to be able to be in a position where we can be comparing school information 
across the world and have teachers understanding more about global teaching and learning from each other across the world. Um, so, you don't feel you have to, but I would love it if you did. Um, gave, it, gave it a go. It's teachertap.co.uk, uh, get the app. We do have a few minutes left, I think, for us to, to give this a try. I would be interested to see. Um, we've just opened this up to um, the Scandinavian uh, countries at the moment. So, because we want to just trial it with you guys, basically. Um, we would uh, love you to give it a go. There are some questions on there at the moment. Uh, there's a tip here that I've put on, which is based just our recent findings and so on, so that we can go back and have a look. Um, but essentially, if you give that a, a try, it asks you for your email address, but I do want to reassure you that your results aren't directly linked to your email address. We just use, use that as a key to just say, yep, yeah, that's you. And um, try, and if you like it, please share it with your teachers. Because the more that we see, and the more results we get, uh, the quicker we can uh, grow this internationally. And are those questions then targeted towards an international audience? We have, right, so yeah. we have, it is a separate, separate panel, so I'll, I'll take questions just now, yeah. Okay. Um, it's a separate panel, so we're going to run it separately from the English uh, panel that we have. So you will be a panel of four to begin with. Um, what we will do is, if we're not getting enough results at the moment, we'll, we'll put the uh, English panel results and what they asked, what they answered over the previous uh, days, just so, so that you can see it. But at the moment, we've uh, just turned it off for the time being. So. You'll, you can answer those questions. They will be aimed at not a Swedish audience at the moment, uh, but a, an international audience. Um, the questions that you've got there at the moment are very much kind of what do you think about the reasons we teach? Uh, why, why are we teachers? So th those are the questions I've put in there at the moment. Um, and that panel, we're hoping, will, will grow as, as people start to use it. I'm going to stop, and Can you if, if you do want to have a have a go with the, the app just now, then please do. Uh, if you want to ask me any questions, then... Uh, How about the tweet that we can retweet? Yeah, I'm going to put that out as soon as we come out of this session. <laughs> yeah, with the link. With the link, yeah, yeah absolutely. Any questions? Do you sell the... I knew that was going to be a question. Yes, yeah. for advertisement. Yeah. So we use the final page um, for targeted school-related advertisements. So it's not just general app. We're not... So if there is... So for example, we've already done one with Pearson, who are an, uh, linked to an exam board, and they're an education publisher in the UK. And what they wanted to do was they wanted to get research-minded teachers to um, do some of their surveys as well. So we targeted it at subjects specific, so not at individuals, but at subjects. So they wanted to uh, recruit some science teachers, so we said, right, all the teachers who are science teachers on TeacherTap, if you'd like to, there's a link here, you could uh, have a go at doing this survey for Pearson, and, and we say it's a sponsored link and so on. They have, uh, they said that it was their best um, for the number of people who saw it versus the number of people who clicked on. It was really good for them to, to, get, to get that, um, that lead through, if you like, from, from the uh, user base that they were targeting. Because they usually just send emails out to schools and say, would you like to do this survey? So that, that worked really well for us. Um, we do run this as a business, so people do pay us for questions that they want to ask teachers. Um, but the majority of the time, and on the international panel certainly at the moment, it will be questions that we've set for the international panel that will just get information to see what people think across the world about teaching and about their jobs. 
but yet on the panel in the UK we now have a large enough size where people are interested in the results and they want to ask teachers questions. Because information is hard data. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Another question? Yeah. Will you in the future sell the technology so that if, like, uh, for example, a group of schools can use the app uh, to gather their own data? So that's a really, we've been asked that uh, yeah. quite a few yeah. times. Yeah. At, the mo at the moment, we are not, because we've set this up so that we're not identifying teachers, yeah. um, <clears throat> we've been reluctant to move into that space because the smaller the sample size, yeah. the more identifiable you are with your answers and so on. Yeah. So it's something that we have considered, but we're we're still working that out Not at the yet. moment. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But it's a, yeah, we've been approached a few times to say, could you, could you do the same in mm -hmm. our school and mm -hmm. so on? Mm -hmm. But we're very much interested in kind of the national um, differences and informing policy and, and letting teachers see the differences mm -hmm. across schools mm -hmm. and breaking those silos a, a little bit, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Gary, do you have a question? Okay, well, thank you very much for your time. What I will say, and I've put that in the, I've put the, um, yeah, go for I it. think researchers, are they interested? In yes, that? yeah, we've, ha we've had a lot of interest from um, researchers. We're contacted um, quite a lot about um, researching different aspects of, of education, looking into um, specific parts. Um, and again, it, it depends on the reason for doing it and so on as to kind of how how we work through that. Some people are wanting to ask lots of questions over a long period of time. Others are very interested in finding out piece of information very quickly to inform something that they're working on at that at that point in time. So yeah. yeah. But in the beginning, Alex, didn't you go out and you asked the teachers what want what do you want to know? Yeah. Yeah, you spent a few months doing that. Yeah, we still do. So yeah. teachers, teachers do um, volunteer their questions. They want, they want to know um, X. So John from Liverpool wants to know the answer to to uh, this question that's been bugging him. You know, do other people f feel like that? We get questions about this all the time. We've had a few this week saying. I'm really concerned about this, and I want to know what other people think. So we, what we do is we say, we take those questions in and we distribute them through the questions depending on what other ones are being asked as well. So yeah, absolutely, we do take questions from teachers as well so that they, they can inform the survey. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for your time.